Hello there everyone, Arena here. Today we're going to be talking about Team Fortress 2 and why I think it is a hidden gem for investing. So if you guys don't know anything about Team Fortress 2 is that it's a barter economy. So it's entirely run dependent based off user interaction and you it kind of just runs its own self ecosystem and economy based on its own valuation of currency. The currency for Team Fortress 2 is keys or Manco supply great keys. They're usually like $2.50 on the Manco shop, but you can get them for cheaper on the same community market and on third party websites like um, backpack.tf, uh, marketplace.tf, Manco store, other sites like that. So I'm going to be explaining to you guys why I think there's a lot of sectors in the Team Fortress 2 market that can be really good for investing. Um, what, one of the biggest things that I will say that gives it the huge bullish indicator, in my opinion, is that um, there's a lot of arbitrage um, in just so many different areas with the rarity, the demand, the supply out there. The supply is so low. It, it's unfathomably low comparative to its uh, Counter-Strike counterpart. So I'm just going to start scattershotting off some information about Team Fortress 2 if you guys don't know anything about it. Um, so I guess some good basic questions, which I've actually made Steam guides and um, spreadsheets, Google Sheets, stuff like that for this already. I'll post it in the description down below. I'm, I actually have a Discord server called TF2 Market Forum where at the start of each month I post case data with like the growth percentage um, in regards to price and quantity decrease and increases. So um, be sure to please uh, follow my Discord and share with others. Um, I'd love for you guys to be there, stuff like that. So. so I guess we should start off with the basics of Team Fortress 2. If you guys don't know anything about it, is that there are levels of wear in Team Fortress 2, just like in Counter-Strike. Uh, there's Factory New, which is 10%. Minimal wear, which is a 20% chance. Field tested, which is a 40%. Well worn, which is a 20%. And Battle Scarred, which is a 10%. So it's 10, 20, 40, 20, 10. So it's just equal distribution between wares as the odds of getting them. Um, then we have the grades, which is civilian grade, uh, which is light gray, freelance grade, light blue, mercenary grade, which is blue, commando grade, which is light purple, assassin grade, which is. Uh, pink or light pink and then elite grade which is red um elite grade i believe is one percent assassin grade is four percent commando grade is 15 percent and mercenary grade which is 80 percent and then the chance of unboxing unusual a lot of people think it's one percent i'm more inclined to believe with data that i've supported that it's 0.66 percent on average of unboxing and unusual I think it's a common misconception, but now you have the number. Let's just get through some more information. The chance of an Australian or Golden Pan drops. Um, the chance of an Australian dropping an MVM tour completion is 2%, and the Golden Pan is 0.005%. Um, what is the chance for a professional specialized in killstreak kits and fabricators drop? Uh, basic killstreak is 80%, specialized killstreak is 15%, and professional killstreak is 3%. Next up, we have the collections for Team Fortress 2. Um, I'm just going to focus on the ones I believe ha which have the biggest bullish indicator for growth. Um, the Gentleman Collection, which is the top shelf minigun, the top shelf grenade launcher, and top shelf wrench. Interestingly, interestingly enough, um, the top shelf minigun and wrench have a chance for a blue unicorn crest, which is a 1% chance. Um, so there's only about a thousand each so that means there's probably only 10 top shelf miniguns with the blue unicorn crest which i've only seen one actually no 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 i've seen two but i haven't got my hands on one and top shelf wrench there might be 20 because it can be double sided so i'm gonna assume that there's gonna be 20 top shelf wrenches with the blue unicorn crest and then uh, 10 miniguns with the blue corn crest. But regardless, there's about a thousand each in existence, archived. Along with the Jumpman collection, there's the High Rollers rocket launcher, which can have a 1% chance for a blue corn crest. Along with the blue unicorn pink chips, it can have up to three, so there can be more demand for that. There's also the Coffin Nail minigun, scatter gun, sticky bomb launcher, and rocket launcher, which has a 1% chance for a blue corn crest. 
it's just another variability which can add demand for a really good collection i i'd compare it as equivalency to, to counter strike as like the cobblestone collection there's a lot of demand there's a lot of supply there's actually a lot of growth in regards to just the top shelf commando grades and mercenary grades in general Another nuance and variability was that um, there was no way to trade up for the strange versions of them. They added that feature later on, I believe, in Jungle Inferno, like two years later after the collection ended. So a majority of the items created during that time frame, they were already used up for trade fillers, stuff like that, when they were cheaper. So a lot of like the special patterns and stuff have actually disappeared before it actually got demand and stuff like that. So, I mean, I just think it's a really great collection. So next up we have... So let's talk about the Harvest Collection now. As previously stated, uh, Ballast Guard has a 10% chance on average, the same as Factory New, but Harvest Grade skins, for example, for Boneyard, look better in higher wear. Half of the skins are autumn colors and patterns, such as leaves, pumpkins, and trees. Uh, the other half are Halloween-based, and the Boneyard skins have a particular aesthetic as lower grades cause the bone-colored parts of the weapon to wear off, revealing a bloody bone marrow-esque pattern to the weapon. So... Uh, the Boneyard Sniper Rifle and Ballast Guard can actually have more demand than the Factory New version later on. So we don't really know. Uh, there's also Blood Scopes and stuff like that, just to add more variability. Um, here is a couple different patterns for Boneyard. As you can see, you can get full black, full purple, and full blue. There's also Autumn Pinks, where you can get a pink pattern on it, which has more demand and people look for that. But as time goes on, people are going to be more interested in this collection. So if you guys want to like diversify into it, I believe that this collection is good to invest into. Here's a couple graphs showing the growth for the top shelf minigun and field tested, which has the most quantity out there. So there'd be just more demand for it because it's like a cheaper version to show like liquidity for it, demand, supply, stuff like that. So as you can see, it's grown a lot within like the past few years and it'll continue to grow after this video, in my estimation and speculation. After that, we have the Pyroland Collection and Warbird Collection. Uh, for the Pyroland Collection, there's not that many weapon cases indexed. I'll show a picture of supply on the screen now showing you how low there is indexed. Uh, people only got this if they were, I believe, a tough break or gunmetal campaign stamp owner yeah you had to buy part of like the pass to in order to get a drop for them and a lot of people already unboxed them and the prices for them are so expensive nowadays it's almost impossible to find so for the pirate lane collection we have for the elite grades the rainbow sniper rifle the rainbow grenade launcher and a rainbow flamethrower there's only about like 700 to a thousand each on average Let's say hypothetically that 50,000 more of these cases were to be opened and all the supplies dried up. The case price is already like $7 on the same community market, not including the key to unbox the case. So the barrier to entry is pretty high, but it's like one of the most desirable rares cases in the game. If someone were to unbox 50,000 of Hireling Weapon cases, which is like almost impossible, the covert rate which is 1% spread across three elites from the case. They would only add around 166 um, on average elite grades to the supply already index. So this is still below 1,000 in any condition uh, for the elite grades. And the unusual drop chance is 0.66% and the covert rate is 1%. So that means if all of them were to be unboxed, only 3.3 unusual elite grades unboxed from the 50k cases on average. Um... I believe for the Warbird collection, we have the Killer Bee Scatter Gun and then the Warbird Rocket Launcher. There's only about a thousand each, a little bit more indexed on backpack.tf. Um, an interesting thing I will say in regards to like the supply and stuff, I'll, I'll put numbers and graphs up while we're talking about the collection so you guys, I, I can't know everything about the market. I'm just scattershotting ideas. They, there's so much. There's so many sectors in the market that I think will age really, really well. So one of the key pieces for the Pyroland Warbird collection that I've been going into is the Unusual variants. I believe the Unusuals are underpriced from the collection. For example, you can get the Blue Mew in uh, Cool. It kind of themes with the weapon. Um, the Isotope for the Brain Candy and Flower Power. It's green on green, green effect, high tier effect. 
there is no energy orbs for these collections that came out um they got discontinued before this got released so there is no energy orb um Pyroland and Warbird Collection. If you guys want to know more information, check out my Steam Guide down below and be sure to join my Discord. That's enough of the shilling. Um, let's not forget Unusual Miss, okay? Unusual Miss are no longer unboxable. Um, they stopped being unboxable, I believe, in 2016. I don't remember the exact date, but all that I know is that they are no longer unboxed and they are limited in supply and have incredibly huge demand and they'll probably continue to trend upwards as long as the game grows over time. For example, like the end of the line effect miss, uh, robo effect miss, Halloween miss. Those are like the top of the top, the creme de la creme, you know, stuff like that. Uh, what else is out there? Um, spelled items. There's post-life spells, which is extremely rare. And it's in very few hands. It's very illiquid, but it has a high threshold. Basically, if you have someone who wants it really bad and they have enough disposable income, they'll pay basically whatever price there is for it. Um, there's end of the line uh, post life effect um, unusuals, which you can get post life spells on. There's robo effect spells, which are kind of rare because you had to use a new robo hat with spells, which were like limited during that time frame. I mean, they're still fairly common, but not as common as like Halloween effect, Halloween spelled ones. There's also qu uh, quick switch miss which um the cases also with them as well cases are so incredibly undervalued in the team fortress 2 market man like if you compare tf2 to csgo i mean cs case prices are absolutely crazy and tf2 cases are like extremely limited in supply most of them are discontinued and are no longer able to be dropped it's such a huge price discrepancy that a lot of people haven't realized. And I think a major part of that is because there's no storage containers in Team Fortress 2. If there ever is a system where you can store a lot of a space of like cases and extra items and stuff like that, I can totally see cases 10xing, 20xing, up to like 50x, 100xing in price if uh, storage containers were ever introduced in Team Fortress 2. So... I'd say stock up on cases. Those are a relatively safe investment, low cost basis, high upside potential, like basically no downside risk because its cost basis is like already close to minimum price. And a lot of them aren't able to be dropped anymore. Um, so cases with quick switch mist like Harold's Helm and Gauze Gaze from Mayflower. Uh, there's also, I think, Blue Moon and Rainy Day, which has like frag proof fragger, which is assassin grade. Uh, Demo Man, uh, Quick Switch Miss, and then uh, the Blast Defense, which is a Merc Grade, I think from uh, Rainy Day. It's hard for me to remember all of them. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's also Smith Miss, and now uh, Summer Limited Effect Hats. So stuff like Translator from the... What collection is that? Quarantine Collection. Like old rare hats like Quarantine, Confidential, um, uh, not Crimson Cash. There's... Uh, Man, it's hard for me to remember them all. But basically, anything like limited winter and summer effect on like these old hats um, can be desirable. Uh, don't forget the retired cosmetics like uh, Batter's Helm, uh, what a Soldier Stash, Football Helmet, Pyro's Beanie, Demon Man's Fro, uh, Mining Light, Prussian Pickle Hob, uh, Trophy Belt, and the Spy One Fancy Fedora. Th those are retired cosmetics. So that there's uh, limited and then there's retired uh, all nine hats that I just specified are retired and also limited so the retired and limited it's kind of like the unusual miss they're no longer to be on box so these are like the top of the top ones you can also get Halloween effects on them so if you can get a Halloween retired hat I think that'd be a pretty good hold and investment there's also a macaw mask which a lot of people are aping for you can get white gems and blue gems stuff like that that's from the jungle jackpot collection it's still available in game but it's limited per account i think you only get two per account for the mission table thing so you get a chance of getting the macaw mask or paint so it's still technically um unlimited in supply um don't forget about winter 2017 winter 2017 is like the most expensive rarest case in the game let me actually check Okay, Winter 2017 Warpaint case has like 86,000 in supply, which is basically nothing. So the key thing about Winter 2017 is that there's the Hannah Warpaint from it. There's the um, Alien Tech Dovetail Damascus and Mahogany Hazard Warning, Geranium, 
But the key pieces is Hannah, uh, Jazzy, and Miami element. They are extremely, extremely, extremely rare. And I can see huge upside potential in the future with that. Um, don't forget about the unusual versions from oh Winter 2017. Any unusual from Winter 2017, Pyreland, and Warbird, I think will be a very good investment at its current price point. There's also loners, which you can find for market value for Factory New and Strange. If you can find those for market price, buy them. Um, as TF2 trends to go upward with growth in the game, it of course this is all speculative, but I'm just saying there's a lot of areas in the market which you can invest into. And then now, like with the TF2 cases, almost any TF2 case is good. Um, there's the Winter 2017 Confidential Quarantine Gargoyle um, Gunmetal. Which has the banana gargoyle case has the cats I believe in it catastrophic companions. So the biggest takeaway for the Team Fortress 2 economy and in investing is that there's a lot of areas of arbitrage, but liquidity is the biggest issue. Since liquidity is one of the biggest issues for Team Fortress 2 with the Gladiator shutting down, I think with the recent uptrend in the TF2 player base, um, I think we may see a future upswing in the short term. Because they're getting done with the CS2 update, they're still working on it to release it, and I think once they get done with this, they're going to start working on Team Fortress 2 at least, or at least make a TF2 update with a new operation, new campaign, stuff like that for the game. They, they just released like 17 new maps in Versus Saxon Hale. I think we reached a new TF2 peak player count of like 259,000 or something like that, I can't remember the exact number. So yeah, I, th I think with my current estimation and, and analysis in the Team Fortress 2 economy, I think there's a lot of areas that are extremely undervalued and will have huge upswings in the future. For me personally, I've built quite a large position in certain collections like Gelman Collection, the Harvest Collection, Winter 2017. There's a few other niche oddities like uh, Loner Tags and Legacy Paint. I, I got those at like close to market price, so I mean... My cost basis is around the same, but as if the game continues to grow, the collection itself is going to go up. So I might as well just have that extra desirability and rarity on top of it. So like I can sell the rarity collectors. Um, also have quite a few rare items like I'm missing an orb on like limited hats. So whenever there's a new event, you can get a limited time event effect on like a hat. And once the event ends, it's it's restricted in quantity forever for that hat. So. I mean, there, there's a lot of areas that you can invest into, but I truly hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, give me your thoughts, give me your opinion. So, what are your thoughts? Do you guys think that we're going to go into a bear market in the TF2 in the future? Do you think we're going to go into a bull market? Um, do you think the game is going to be dead? Do you think the game is going to continue to rise in popularity as time goes on? Uh, leave your thoughts down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like down below. Be sure to subscribe if you guys haven't. And check out some of my other videos. I made some investment videos of like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, uh, Peter Lynch, uh, Bill Ackman, so like some top tier investors in, uh, and uh, just financial analysts in the business world who are successful and share their stories and maybe you can learn something from them and maybe you can learn something from me where I invest in um, third party economies made by Valve. But there is a still a huge risk into it. Um, I mostly just like the no fee trading, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about taxes and stuff like that. So it's like, it's technically unregulated, but it is a barter economy. Liquidity is still an issue, but a lot of people are in the CSGO economy. And, I, and you know, just price discrepancies between the games. I'd rather put my money in the TF2 rather than CSGO. I do have some CSGO holdings, of course, but my investment style is trying to get in before the huge wave of interest into something you know a, a majority of profits made is trying to determine whether or not something would be a good hold in the future uh, there's a famous quote it's better to get a fair price on a good business than a good price on a fair business um i hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you guys for watching peace